This morning I'm going to start out by uh, developing the side of the sleigh. Um, the other day I painted in the, the front of the sleigh the red parts and um, I intentionally stayed away from the side of the sleigh so that I, I could uh, keep those, keep the values separate, try to establish it. There's a, the, the light is, is catching the side of the sleigh much more than it is the front of the sleigh. Switching again to my best number one. There's a little bit of a gold detail right along the the upper edge of this, this is the side of the seat actually. And, um, I don't know if I care about that gold detail, but um, if I don't save it, then I've kind of made the decision already. Those, now is as good a time as any to make that decision, but I'm going to leave it open because I. Kind of like the gold trim. I think that uh, it's likely that I won't include as much gold trim as as there actually is in this sleigh, but, um, but I'd like to include some limited amounts of it. And I don't know where it's going to make the most sense. So for now, I'll just. Try to save it wherever I can. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna paint this area here, and I, I need to this this runs into this, so there's no problem there if the two bleed together. But this I want to keep separate because the, the light falls on that much different than on this area just below the the side of the seat much different than it does on the side of the seat itself and there's also a little bit of gold trim separating the, the two panels what I'm painting around here is the, is the side of the woman's lap robe I suppose it is Change to my best number one again to paint up into this corner where the, the side of the sleigh meets the, the Christmas tree that they're carrying. And I don't know yet what, what that's going to look like where the, the red meets the green. leave my options open as much as I can right now. All right, now uh, there's there's quite a bit of light that's that's hitting especially this back quarter of the of the sleigh. So I'm going to flood some some clear water in here. And then Drying my brush off, I'm going to lift a little bit to create a nice soft edged highlight. That's a good start. 
I'm not shooting for the final color here. I'm just trying to establish most that's partly the the shape of the of the major elements of the sleigh and partly the starting point for the for the color of the paintwork on the sleigh. Um, it's not imperative that it be the right color. I can uh, I'll, I'll be able to to make adjustments to it, and I will be making adjustments to it because there there's a lot of light and shadow on on the various parts of the sleigh that are that affect the the local color. Um, I'd like to start to develop the the dark values of the woman's coat and the and the tree, but. I, I need to stay away from the tree until that the wash that I just did dries a little bit. Um, I, I'm going to start with the with the dark values on the woman's coat and hat. She has a gold brooch on the on the front of her hat, which um, I I could mask it, but um, I think instead I'm just going to paint around it and this is a it's it looks like sable maybe it's it's a very it's almost black but there's it's kind of a brownish cast to some parts of the coat at least the hat looks like it's entirely black so for the hat I think I will use my um, neutral tint neutral tint is the closest thing that I have to black on my palette it's, um, it's very dark, and my brush is much too big. I'm going to switch to the best number one again. Not sure if this brooch warrants all this fussiness. But like with so many other things, if I, I paint around it, it keeps, keeps my options open, and I can decide later on whether, whether I care about it or not. A little bit of a the collar of the, the woman's coat it wraps around her her cheek above the red scarf. I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna float a little bit of slightly more concentrated neutral tint into a few places collar being one of them. And this side of the hat. Let's um, see if I can get one of my Winsor Newton brushes to behave for me. The big New Winsor Newton brushes are wonderful. The small ones just do not behave well at all. The woman has a red scarf on that flays over and around this fur coat she's wearing. So I want to be sure to define the shape of the, of, of the scarf as best I can in painting this fur coat. Drapery can be a challenge and a scarf is essentially drapery. Painting here is actually the back of the seat. It may well be black too. Yeah, I'll just paint it, this. Paint it in the same neutral tint. It's, it blends right into the, the fur coat. It has, a, has the shape of a, an upholstered seat there. Brush sizes are highly variable. They're, they make sense within a particular line but, of brushes by, by the same manufacturer, but comparing sizes from one manufacturer to another is pretty useless. They really have very little in common. Woman has a gloved hand, and there, there's. It looks like perhaps a 
right? Sateen binding on the on the cuff of the of the coach he's wearing. So I'm saving this area right here for, for all of that stuff. And right here, the crop has a bit of a, a highlight surface on it. So I'm going to paint around that as well. This end of the, the scarf is fringed. So I want to suggest that without getting too fussy and uh, without when I when I paint the, the color of the scarf, um, I don't want the the black that I've painted to to define the, the fringing to bleed into the into the red and sully it and blacks neutral tint in this case are um, very easily reactivated and right about where I'm stopping here is the woman's other hand gloved hand That's a good start on the woman's coat. And now I have put some nice, juicy, fairly fresh paint adjacent to where I was gonna paint the, the tree. So once again, I gotta hold off on that. Um, I think I can start to develop the, the lap robe. There's a, a red bound edge on the top that I need to stay away from because it's right adjacent to the, the neutral tint that I just painted. But below that, down to right about here where there's another orangey red binding showing, the rest of it is shades of brown. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start to develop that. And what do I want to use? I guess I'll go back to my my raw umber. I, to me, the, the brown of the of the lap robe is not as red as the as the horse's coat. But um, what I painted for the horse's coat is probably not red enough for it either. So uh, raw umber may be just about right for this. What I'm trying to, to establish here is the, the dark values. Um, the, the lighter values are, are a pretty warm. I mean, the burnt sienna is probably going to be just about right for, for the warm, for the lighter values. I'm going to float a little bit of my ultramarine blue and burnt sienna mix. The, the more neutral mix into a few of these dark areas. Good. 
kind of like that. There's a, a nice variety of values and mostly browns, but some uh, some areas that verge on on black. I'm gonna try dropping a little bit of my burnt umber into the shoulder of this woman's coat. See how that works to get that sable color. Neutral tint by itself is a little dead. I'd like to have a little bit of warmth in there. And a burnt sienna may be just the ticket for that. Burnt umber, rather. Sorry. Let's try putting a little bit. And the hat is, is pretty black. I think I'll leave the hat alone. Now, since I have once again, added some wet paint to the area adjacent to the to the Christmas tree. I think that I will I'll paint this this shadowed area right in the underneath the Christmas tree. And uh, I, I guess that's the back seat. And that is very black, so I'm going to use my neutral tint. I'm going to leave just a little bit of a, a saved white boundary on the paintwork. I need to be careful to keep my hand out of the wet paint on the woman's coat as I do this. Once I get up to the to the seat, the gold edge stops. And this very dark color. Meets the, the paintwork of the of the back of the seat. And all of this kind of bleeds into the shadows of the of the bottom limbs of the of the Christmas tree. So I'm going to try to pull out a, something of a. Created wash here, create a softer edge that the, that the Christmas tree can kind of emerge out of. There's one last black area that I'm going to try to try to paint in, and then I'm going to call this a session. Let the let it dry and tackle the the Christmas tree next time around. But right in this area, there is a it looks like a piece of iron that's that's bent around the the side of the back, kind of an armrest um, for the for the front seat, um, and that's catching some light. But below that, between that and the paintwork, there's a a dark shadow area. I'm gonna paint that in with my neutral tint. I'm gonna walk away and let this all dry so I can come back and tackle the tree. Saving the top edge of the, of the side of the seat so that I can decide if I want to paint the gold board around it or not. I think that looks pretty good. Um, I think actually I'm going to do one last thing. I, there, there was a there's a, a wooden timber that runs across the the front of the sleigh here that 
is uh, not painted red and I've got got red painted over that area so I think I'm going to try to reclaim the close to the white of the paper there it's not imperative that it be white because there isn't any white there but uh, but there there is a um, piece of bright work there um, so I'm going to use my my number two scrubber brush. Um, these are Creative Mark Scrubbers. That's the, the name of them. Um, I'll leave information about them in the description. And I want to make this as parallel to the the bottom edge of the sleigh and to this edge here as I can. I think this timber may actually tie the two runners together. sable out as much as I can and uh, try to actually that's too big I'm gonna use a, a liner one of my favorite liners especially for relatively fine small lines like this one is this one right here this is a this is a low Cornell number one and I believe I got it at AC Moore which we no longer have in our area uh, close by anyway um, but low Cornell brushes are fairly readily available and uh, I, I particularly like this number one. So liners, also called. Oh, I want to do that. Just drop a big dollop of water right in the middle of my red sleigh. Liners are also called riggers, and. Um, Water just pulled my the water from my brush right out into it. It's like a magnet. So I think that's probably as good as I'm going to be able to do right now. It's not bad. It's not as straight as I'd like it to be. And it's not quite as wide as I'd like. Anyway, liners and riggers. Um, I, from from a fine art standpoint, my understanding is that they were they were developed to uh, paint the rigging on tall ships, hence the name riggers. But um, but I, I think that they they're also very closely related to sign painters' brushes. Sign painters need to be able to, um, to paint long lines without having to reload their, their brushes with paint in order to, to paint letters. Of course, sign painting is a, now kind of a quaint anachronism, but um, back in the day, it was a very important job when I was growing up in Springfield. I had a sign painter who lived down the street from me and I was kind of in awe of the signs that he painted day after day that announced the specials in the local supermarkets. 
All right, I'm gonna call that done for now. Um, I think the, the area that I've just reclaimed there is, is probably gonna be just fine. Um, I've got quite a bit of wet paint in the, in the area of the coat, um, but the sleigh is coming along nicely. So I'll see you next time, thank you.